Since space is an illusion, the distinction between inside and outside, without which the world cannot be an objective reality, also becomes unreal. Thus all the multitudinous limitations which have always appeared to pertain to us are shown to be illusory. Since there is no outside, there are not only no inanimate objects, but also no living persons in that outside. We have seen already that many of the arguments for the world's reality took for granted the multiplicity of persons located in space. This idea is clearly an outgrowth of the ego sense. The eye sense, being limited to the body of the seer, cannot help imagining that in every body that he sees there is a person. Thus the notions of you and he arise, and these are ignorance. The sage expresses this as follows. When the sense of I am the body arises, then the notions of you and he also arise. But when, by the quest of the truth underlying the I, the I sense is put to an end, then the notions of you and he also cease. That which then shines as the sole remainder is one's true self. The following episode, taken from the Vishnu Purana, to which the writer's attention was drawn by the sage, may help to a clear understanding of the whole question. It tells how the sage Ribu instructed his disciple Nidaga. The sage went in disguise to the disciple and found him in his native town. The disciple failed to recognize the sage. He took him for some rustic that had come sightseeing. Just then a royal procession was going along, and the sage asked what it was. Then the following dialogue took place. Nidaga said, The king of this place is going in a procession. Who is the king? said the sage. The one who is seated on the elephant. Which is the elephant and which is the king? The one that is above is the king and the one that is below is the elephant. The sage in disguise said, I do not understand your meaning. Please explain it more clearly. The disciple wondered at the profound ignorance of the seeming rustic. To make him understand, he forgot upon he got upon the shoulders of the sage and said, Look here, I am above, like the king, and you are below, like the elephant. And the disguised sage said, If, as you say, you are above like the king, and I am below like the elephant, then make me understand what you mean by I and you. Then Nadaga jumped down in haste and fell at Ribu's feet and said, Surely thou art my holy master, Ribu, for no one else has such an unfailing awareness of the profound truth of non-duality. Ribu told him that that was the teaching he needed and went away. Thus it was that Nidaga was instructed in the truth of the real self. He was led on step by step and finally told that the difference between one person and another is unreal and that there is only one real self. Individuality and the plurality of souls are illusions, the offspring of the ignorance I am the body. And this very ignorance is the sole root of all sense of difference. The notions of above and below seem to be true to the disciple in this story only because he identified himself with one body and the sage with another. The bodies were above and below, not the self. For the self transcended all differences. The distinction of inside and outside is no more real than that of above and below, and without it there is no world. 
It is also this very ignorance that makes us assume that the mind is insignificantly small and located in a corner of the body called the brain. This false belief makes it difficult for us to conceive how this vast universe can be in the mind. We even think it ridiculous. The sage of Arunachala tells us that this notion of ours is an inversion of the truth. He says that it is the mind that is vast, not the world, noting, The knower is ever greater than the known, and the seer than the seen. That which is known is in the knower, and that which is seen is in the seer. The vast expanse of the mind is in the mind, not outside, because the mind is everywhere, and there is no outside to it. The infinite universe, being contained in this seemingly external sky, is also in the mind. Even the great gods whom the devotees adore in their respective heavens are in the mind alone. That divinity which is conceived as different from the devotee is only relatively real. The true divinity is reality, in which worshipper and worshipped are one, the mind that differentiates them having no place there. Thus everything that the mind thinks of or thinks it sees, such as body, objects of senses, the other bodies supposed to be other persons, as well as heaven and hell and other regions or world, is inside and not outside. The root of all these superstitions is the initial error of taking it for granted that one single body is the self, Atman, and all the rest is not self. And because of this ignorance, we do not even think of questioning the correctness of this or any other belief that arises out of this ignorance. Once we awaken to the fact that we have been deceiving ourselves as to the truth of the self, in accepting as true the illusion that the body is the self, we shall have little difficulty in accepting at least tentatively the teaching that the world is not an objective reality. We were told by the sage that the world is unreal because it is nothing but the five kinds of sensations. Among the five sensations, there is one which merits special consideration, namely form. Without the sensation of forms, we cannot become subject to the primary ignorance, the ego sense. This egoic movement comes into being by taking hold of a form, a body, confounding that form with the real self and thus limiting the real self. The question whether forms are real is therefore separately dealt with by the sage when he says, If the self be with form, then the world and God would be so too. But if the self be formless, then how and by whom are forms to be seen? Is the spectacle ever otherwise than as seen I is? The real I is just the real self. It is infinite consciousness, formless and worldless. The meaning was explained by the sage himself as follows. If the eye that sees be the eye of flesh, then gross forms are seen. If that eye be assisted by lenses, then even invisible things are seen to have form. If the mind be the eye, then subtle forms are seen. Thus the seeing eye and the object seen are of the same nature. That is, if the eye be itself a form, it sees nothing but forms. But neither the physical eye nor the mind has any power of vision of its own. The real eye is the self. It is formless, 
being the pure and infinite consciousness, reality, and does not see forms. Forms are created by the very act of seeing. From this we learn that forms appear only because of the ego sense, the primary ignorance. 